So let's talk about the aim of McLaurin's. It is actually very, very straightforward. The idea of McLaurin's is to give you the possibility of re-expressing any function into an infinite polynomial. For example, right, let's say I have a function fx, and the aim is to re-express this into an infinite polynomial. So if I can just quote for us a general polynomials format, uh, the first number that I'm going to quote here is going to be the constant term. So it's going to be the term that is independent of x. So I'm going to use this notation, a0, okay, with a subscript 0, it is not like power 0, whatever. a0 represents for me the coefficient of the first term of my polynomial, which is independent of x. So the next term, I'm going to use this notation. I'm going to go for a1, x. Okay, so a1 is the coefficient of x to the power of 1. And the next one is going to be a2, x to the power of 2. And we will have a, a3, x to the power of 3, a4, x to the power of 4. And like what I was telling you, we are not talking about any polynomial. McLaurin's aim is to re-express a function into an infinite polynomial. So I will have this plus dot dot dot, which is now very, very crucial because I'm not doing I'm not doing the kind of expansion that is like in a secondary school where you have finite number of terms. So it is an infinite polynomial, so plus dot 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 all the way until infinity. So your aim right is when you're given any function, just re-express it into an infinite polynomial. Or maybe let me just test you guys, okay? Because it's, it's just a very basic logic. Okay, so can I just ask you, right? If you were to look at this polynomial over here, okay, you need to you need to do a bit of pattern recognition, okay? So you look at this polynomial over here, and uh, can you sort of like think of how you can use uh, just some simple analysis and, and logic, right? How do you think you can find a0, a1, a2? x is the variable, so x we are not going to change. So our aim is to just make sure that we can calculate for the value of the coefficients. Okay, so our aim is if, I, if a function can be re-expressed as a polynomial, I want to know what is a0, I want to know what is a1, a2, a3, a4. You know, it is just calculating the number for all the coefficients. So can you think of this for this particular scenario here, right? How do you think you can calculate for a0? How do you think you can calculate for a0? Okay, so from, uh, from Tobias' observation, you can see that for all the terms here, right? Even though I cannot code all the terms all the way into infinity, okay? But for all the terms that are here, they are all going to go up to... I mean, they are all going to contain x. They are all going to be multiplied by x. Which means that if I want to find a0, just by observation, we can do this. We can let x be equal to 0. When I let x be equal to 0, on the left hand, here, on the left -hand side here, we have a f0. And on the right hand side, it is going to be a0 plus all the rest of the terms will become 0. This tells me that a0 is equal to f0. And please take note that we are supposed to know the function f. So we are able to compute f0 as a constant. f0 is not a variable, f0 is a constant. So this can now be replaced. This will be f0. It is a constant. Okay? How do you think we can find a1? The coefficient of x. How do you think we can find a1? Again, what if we were to just use, uh, just make use of some simple analysis and logic and some processes that we already know? Is there a way that we can find at a1? Anyone? Anyone? Any suggestion? How do you think we can find a1? Any idea? Sorry? You can just uh, differentiate on both sides, then you sum in zero and then. Okay, so what Jerome says is, again, if you were to just think about a bit of uh, pattern recognition, it's very, it's very, it, it can be very easily done, right? If you were to take this, which is still in this variable form, so if I were to take this and I differentiate it once, on the left-hand side, it is f prime x, if I were to differentiate it. Then on the right-hand side, because this is a constant, so when I differentiate it, it will become 0, and this will become a1. When I differentiate this, x will disappear. This will be 2a2 x and this is going to become 3a3x square and this will be 4a4x to the power of 3 and all the way until infinity and if i were to try to apply exactly the same thing as what i've done here letting x be equal to zero especially when i know for the rest of the terms here they are all going to be multiplied by x individually but letting x be equal to zero on the left hand side we will have a f prime zero which is a constant i'm just subbing zero into the expression that i've differentiated it's going to be equal to a1 plus all the rest of the terms, which is going to be equal to 0. 
This tells me that A1 is F prime zero, which is a number. This is how we can solve for the second coefficient. So this can now be replaced also. This, I'm going to replace it by F prime zero. So let me do, let me try to find A2, A3, A4 first, okay, before we see whether we can see some kind of a trend, which hopefully we can, we can generalize this entire process a bit even more. So let me find A2, okay, so I'm going to use the same process. To find A2, I'm going to make use of this equation over here. And I'm going to use the same idea as what Jerome has mentioned. What if I were to just differentiate this again? You will give me f prime prime x. Because when I differentiate this again, this a1 will disappear. And this, because it is in terms of just, I mean, because it is just one single x to the power of 1. So when I differentiate this, it will give me 2a2, which is going to be independent of x. And for the rest of the terms, it's going to be equal to 3 times 2a3x then plus 4 times 3a4x squared, and all the way until infinity, the pattern tells me that all these terms here will, con will be multiplied by x, which means that if I were to just let x be equal to 0 again, on the left-hand side here, I'll get another constant, and on the right-hand side, it will be 2a2 plus 0, which means that a2 here is going to be f prime prime 0 divided by 2. Hang on. Before I fill in this, right, let's try to find a3. I'm going to go through the same process. I'm going to take this, if I were to just differentiate this with respect to x again. On the left-hand side, it is going to be f prime 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 x. And on the right-hand side, this is going to disappear. This is going to become 3 times 2, a3. Then plus this here is going to be 4 times 3 times 2, a4x. And all the way until infinity. Again, if I were to let x be equal to 0, we have f prime 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 0. This is going to be equal to 3 times 2, a3. Three. All the rest of the terms will disappear. It is just going to be this on the right-hand side, which means that a3 here is going to be f prime 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 0 divided by 3 times 2. And because pattern recognition is going to be a very, very useful tool in H2 math, regardless of whether you have done series and sequences or whether you have, you have not done series and sequences, it can still help us to do math better. So based on what we have seen so far right a2 is good to this a3 is good to this and we are we know that here is where we are going to be getting our a4 i believe you guys can already sort of like predict how a4 is going to look like correct a4 is going to look something that is like this so let's do a quick prediction okay before we try to go and find this a4 so a4 most likely is going to be f prime 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 m26 actually shows this notation this f bracket n zero so let me tell you okay you, you, you don't expect yourself to just prime, prime, prime. The moment when you go beyond 3, then after that, the next one, right? I mean, if you want to prime 4 times, it is your choice, okay? But uh, we can just simply use this notation. Okay, so for A4, looking at the pattern, A2 looks like this, A3 looks like this. A4 is, was belonging to this, so I suspect that A4 is probably going to look like this. F, uh, differentiating it 4 times, divided by 4 times 3 times 2. Let's check very quickly whether it is really true one last time. So I'm going to differentiate this with respect to x. I will have a f bracket 4 x. And on the right hand side, this is going to disappear. And this here is going to be 4 times 3 times 2 a4 plus all the way until infinity. Although we didn't write down the terms that are here, but I believe that you can sort of like imagine that all these terms here will be still multiplied by x individually, which means that if I were to let x be equal to 0, we will have this 0, which is a constant. Then it will be 4 times 3 times 2, a4, and the rest is going to be equal to 0, which means that a4 is going to be equal to, uh, differentiating it 4 times, subbing, subbing 0 into it, divided by 4 times 3 times 2. We're going to try to put this, this, this into our equation here. But like what I was saying, we want to try to generalize this whole thing. So to generalize this, the denominator is 2, the denominator is 3 times 2, the denominator is 4 times 3 times 2. What if I were to just see the denominator as this 2 times 1, 3 times 2 times 1, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Then I can actually generalize this a2 f prime prime, I differentiate 2 times, everything seems to be related to 2. Then it will be f prime prime 0 divided by 2 times 1 is 2 factorial. It's easier because it can be represented by a notation. As for this, 
3, A3, everything seems to be related to 3, F prime 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 0 divided by 3 times 2 times 1, 3 factorial. This will be F4, 0 divided by 4 factorial, which means that now it's even easier for me to remember this now because it is X square and everything is going to be related to 2, A2. So this is going to be F prime prime 0 divided by 2 factorial. A3, we have just looked at A3. A3 is f prime 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 0 divided by 3 factorial and a4 here is f4 0 divided by 4 factorial in fact i can even deduce how about the x to the power of n x to the power of n will be differentiating n number of times 0 divided by n factorial x to the power of n and let's not forget that this is going to go all the way until infinity which is actually the formula that we have here in our MF26. It is the McLaurin's formula. It is the one that I was telling you.